Good day, fellows. Lesson eight of Big Data Applications and Analytics, Jeffrey Fox Instructor. And this is discussing data science and the pipeline which runs from data to information to knowledge to wisdom to decisions. That's this pipeline here. Uh, and I sometimes denote this whole thing as DIKW, Data Information Knowledge Wisdom. Because wisdom is not so clearly defined, but it's sort of intuitively obvious. Uh, wisdom is sort of a community property, whereas knowledge might be the knowledge of an individual. So wisdom is sort of a more sophisticated knowledge. And uh, we also will have a little discussion of how the sort of commercial effectively approaches to data science, the platforms that enable data science and activity. So let's get going, thank you very much. And that's um, stated precisely here. And I say under decisions, we have things like community acceptance of results, like um, uh, the Higgs particle exists, that's an example of a Physics, community wisdom, and another possibility is that you know the government will run some data through this um, process and make a decision. We will offer some new healthcare service or something like that. Typically, as you go down this pipeline, the amount of data in measured in bits and bytes uh, de decreases, it goes down in size, where if you like, the value goes up. So. Uh, um, and that's a very important, that's actually why it's not so easy sometimes to say how much data there is, because people can quote the data at this level or this level. And sometimes the data at this level is actually thrown away immediately, because it's produced in some sensor and you immediately process it, and then you get less. I mean, uh, if you were a satellite um, circulating, circu uh, Running around Mars or something, whereas there's a huge cost of uh, data transfer, you would do as much processing possible before you sent the data. So you'd put it as far forward in this pipeline as you could. Here's a picture which I've used an awful lot, which shows this um, information, data, information, knowledge, wisdom, decision process in a sort of more Broad fashion around the edges here, we have all the sources of data, or actually of information, or knowledge, um, including raw sources like uh, these are seismographs. This is probably a bioinformatics machine. Here's some water measurements. And um, here we have some telescope, or smartphone, or so on. We have just services running on computers. Uh, we have uh, satellites. We have just another cloud, another whole thing. Here we have the LHC detector. We have a database. We have a dupe cluster. We have a grid. We just have some storage. We have a webcam. We have a telescope. And these are just run through filters. The filters are what promote you through this pipeline. Uh, you, you do not go from information to data in a filter, you go from data to information, information to knowledge. So here we trundle through our various things, data, information, knowledge, wisdom, and then we go to the portal where the president or you or whoever's looking, the doctor makes the decision. This is how we're going to treat your illness or what, whatever the decision is. So this is a in generally um, important picture. And you can say that most of these things are filter clouds running analytics. I also put so-called discovery clouds, because you're going to do queries on this data. And uh, that's going to be part of your decision making. And all of these things in principle run on clouds. They're all built as services, and that's uh, the, the way we're meant to do things this world. And here is our final uh, slide in this set of this very general discussion of the pipeline. And we just take Google Maps and navigation as the example of the field. So the data is the original maps, USGS, satellites for the overlays, and the street camps. The information is the integration of that data are we have to clean up on a basic Google Maps web page. Knowledge is when Google Maps displays a particular way to get from 
place A to place B, sometimes with multiple choices. And then finally, the decision of the wisdom comes when you actually decide what route to drive, and you drive that route, hopefully getting to where you want to go. So this is just a simple example of the DIKW uh, pipeline, which is pretty universal. Although I stress that the actual dividing line between data and information, between information and knowledge, and knowledge and wisdom, and wisdom and decisions, is extremely artificial and wishy-washy. So you shouldn't uh, read too much into into that. Okay, folks, here we have the hype cycle for data science and machine learning. Notice they're joined together. And uh, what is it? It's full of machine learning and deep learning things with a few additional or broad categories like edge analytics, augmenting analytics, user interfaces, ethics, and so on. Uh, there's some graph analytics, another leading edge of machine learning, um, anomaly detection and event stream processing. And here we have Python. We all know everything should be done with Python. Here we have Spark, which is the Apache Big Data software, where our own software, Twister 2, is even better. But nobody knows it except us. And um, here we have quantum machine learning. More than 10 years, that's fair enough. It's currently quantum computing is used to do a quantum annealing to run through very uh, difficult uh, optimization landscapes. See, we have straightforward things which still seem to be not so far up the hype curve, AI cloud services, and so on. So this is a list of all the important issues in AI with some mundane things over here, text analytics. Uh, predictive analysis, these are very general terms, but they're going to get implemented by machine learning and probably deep learning. So it's really a deep learning hype cycle, whatever it says. And here we have the magic quadrant, which is used to rate products. And what's interesting here is there is no exciting company here. Databricks is the Spark company. H2O is a pretty solid um, machine learning company, Microsoft, IBM, Google, they're all struggling. MathWorks is hardly a leading edge kind of part, part of this. They're very solid, important, as is SAS and TIPCO. Um, I'm not certain what KINME and RapidMiner are, I, but um, Alterix is a well-known company. Um, which you notice has the uh, very strong software, uh, but not considered at least by um, Gartner to be terribly innovative. So it's sort of interesting. You would expect to have DL, DL Inc. up here. Should be here, DL Inc. Provide deep learning to everybody. Not there, so you should drop out of this class and go and do that. That's it. Go and do it, thank you.